Hello my soccer universe, last one for the week and we'll talk of course uh, for the weekend I should say but I will talk of course uh, what I usually talk last although I don't always intend to be maybe, maybe I should make it uh, sometimes a little bit sooner but you know with Monday evening games happening in both Spain and Portugal that's what we're talking about uh, it's always easy to have this kind of the last video in many ways and we have loads to talk about, especially in Portugal, where we had the big clash between Porto and Sporting. And this time I decided to not order it by the change in expected points because it doesn't make much sense. Porto, the big winner in this one. And emotions flaring up, but basically uh, Sporting got themselves back into title contention only to throw it away. Well, referee help maybe in there a little bit as well. I let you judge, watch the highlights. It was a game where emotions were flaring up. High, 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 high. Uh, we also had, of course, in Spain, uh, the first leg of the semifinal in the Copa del Rey. Kind of a little bit going under the radar, to be honest. Um, and then, uh, the yeah, what, what, what can I say about La Liga? We had an absolute bonkers game between Atletico Madrid and Getafe, a scoreline that, if you would have even said me two years ago, this was an Atletico Madrid game, 4-3. Uh, I would not have believed that this is ever possible. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit more. Uh, we had Real Madrid dropping points for a change, uh, but, you know, without Benzema and, you know, Champions League looming, maybe I don't want to make too much, but the gap is closing again. But what did I say last week? Sevilla had the chance... To put pressure, they didn't do it. Real Madrid extended. Now, okay, it's back where, where, where it was. It's still, I don't trust anyone. And then, of course, there was the Barcelona Derby, uh, which was an exciting game in many ways. Ended in a draw with a late equalizer. To be honest, it proved to me that Barcelona is not turning a corner. Just not. And I. I'm getting tired of Barcelona in many, 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 many ways. But this would be its own video, how I actually think Barcelona really has, not only this season, but over the past, I want to say almost decade, has slowly lost their way. And I, I, I'm becoming really tired of them in many ways. But, you know, topic for another video. We'll start in Portugal with a duel between those two here, Porto and Sporting. Uh, first of all, weird jerseys by Sporting uh, to play at Porto. I think one could have played in the first team jerseys, but okay. Um, Sporting had a Tony lead in that one. Paulinho and Santos uh, in the third, at the third, fourth. It was high emotion, full stadium, everything that, that you would expect at Sporting took right the wind out of the sails with the early goal and then also uh, the second one. Sporting is actually a very well coached team. However, uh, Viera, after Taremi assist, pulls one back that kind of kept Porto hanging in there. And that was the lifeline that Porto needed. I don't think that the tunnel for Sporting was all that warranted, but they were the more clinical team. I it all then changed with a yellow-red for Quartas in the 49th minute. From that moment on, it was just holding on for Sporting. Can you get um, the... Can you hold on to the, to, to, to the lead? Because you ain't going to score one because now Porto is going to go all out. And they really went all out. And then it was only the 78th minute to the equalizer. And that they didn't come more was a little bit, um, how, how, how to say, uh, fortunate for Sporting as well. But, you know, with that one, they honestly needed, needed a win. So it was anyway already, it felt like a uh, lost cause and then it just went crazy. Uh, after the final whistle uh, went, an absolute mass brawl uh, ensued with four red cards. Pepe is getting senses. And then over the uh, Marquesine, uh, Palinia, Tabata, all of them going. I, I think it seemed like 100 people on the pitch and really not liking each other and having arguments with 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 each other. it was a highly emotional game a little bit i have i have to say again uh the headline should should have been on this game which was super exciting and but then it's all about the uh bus stop at the end where you feel yeah this again doesn't do liga portugal who actually had for most time a rather exciting title race who actually have a very good Euro european season i mean it was only a fluke loss of porto to atletico madrid that didn't see 
all three Port Portuguese contestants go on to the next round. So there's a lot of positive stuff happening for, for Portugal. But then, you know, you had first the Belenense uh, only starting game with eight players. Now we have the bus of it in Port and Sporting. But on the other side, it also makes for what's so exciting about uh, this league that the big three really, really, really don't like each other. And that always makes it exciting. Uh, other than that, Benfica beating Santa Clara. Uh, yeah, finally Benfica can get, 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 get win again. But yeah, uh, if we look up top, as I said, the it's six points still between Port and Sporting. If Sporting would have won that one, it would have been three points. And then I think we could talk about title race. Six points, it all points to Sporting. Benfica, uh, yeah, kind of making also up ground, but uh, they are too inconsistent as well. So I think the top three are very much uh, set in stone. Uh, just show, showing that the um, matches for the next round. I mean, Boavista against Benfica is this traditional duel, but Boavista is nowhere. Uh, Sturil has been good, but it's also trending downwards, have to play at Sporting and Portrait Mora Range. Also, not gonna happen anything. I would say we'll jump over the border and go to the Copa del Rey where um, Rayo had a lead over Betis after nine, uh, after five, five minutes. But Betis at, at the moment is one of these teams that you just gotta watch. They are really, really good. And again, uh, finding themselves down but clawing themselves back in. Uh, Iglesias and Carvalho uh, getting uh, the win for Betis in the first leg. And so you kind of see already Betis going somewhere. Uh, and then uh, Raul Garcia gave Athletic Bilbao the lead, um, but Valencia also can come back to Hugo Duro. So that one is pretty much in the balance, but we have to wait now uh, almost a month, half a month at the moment, uh, to see who will actually move on to the final. I would say Betis and I still think Athletic Club, but uh, I can also see Valencia. Betis seems to be the big favorite in this one as of now. Uh, as I said in the intro, um, Sevilla get a 2-0 win over Elche. Celta actually missing a very late penalty against Cardiff. That could have helped them in their uh, quest made for your European spot. I did see a little bit about Villarreal, uh, Real Madrid. Was not the great, great the, the, the great game. I thought that Real Madrid had overall control without being convincing. Gareth Bale was playing, so ended in a nil nil. Late on, I think Bale even hit the crossbar, so they could have snatched one. It's not that that there was all weakness, but it seems like that without Benzema, the secret sauce in the Real Madrid game is gone. Rayo uh, seemingly still dejected from their loss in the semi final three nil at home to Osasuna. The Rayo have also been losing ground. As, as as of late, and then the absolute nuts Atletico Madrid get half a game. Uh, probably the craziest game that, that you'll ever see. Atletico Madrid game, I should say. Miss penalty, oh, great save um, in the ninth minute. Suarez, but Atletic get up. Correa and Cunha by the 27th, 2 0. You think they're cruising? No, Mayoral 30th, and then two penalties and two hand 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 balls. I mean, how often do you see two penalty decisions going against a certain team? This is almost, there's almost the unwritten rule, you cannot do that. But both penalties, if you look at VAR, it was all right. And so, uh, Uno turns it around before the half, and I think in the past 10 whatever games or so, Getafe had not even scored more than one goal total. Now they score three in within a half. It absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, but you know, with all the reviews, you know, for the, for all the three penalties that happening, ample stoppage time was given. Angel Correa get an equalizer uh, just just before. So I mean, a six, and I actually really regret not watching it. Well, I, I remember Saturday evening I said, ah, there's nothing. Even I've watched so 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 much. Let's just have uh, you know, take it easy. In in, in in a way, I didn't watch the well, watch the game. Yeah. That was bad on me. I saw the highlights in the morning. I saw it on the thumbnail 4-3 and said, oh, no, you didn't. Well, I did. <laughs> but then uh, it gets even worse for Atleti. Felipe gets sent off with a red card. And you really think at that point, uh, Atleti, again, will not get this win. However, for some reason, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And Atletico Madrid always need the, this kind of additional punch and so they get it. Hermoso, who had been outclassed by um, 
Adama Traore uh, just a week ago uh, gets the equal. Uh, Joao Felix of all people provides the assist. And I'm also with kind of a, a back heel, no, 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 a bicycle kick scores the equalizer. An absolute crazy game. You always think that this might now galvanize Atletico Madrid, but not this season. Uh, it's It will continue being up and down. Uh, up and down is also what I have in mind for Valencia. I actually saw a bit of that game where Alaves took tactically in 16 and then was two penalties. First Gedesh equalizing and then Jose Lu uh, taking the lead for Al Alaves again. Probably a little bit too late for Alaves, uh, as, as we'll see, they are struggling with relegation, but you know, uh, maybe something. Uh, also, a relegation strike is Levante. I mean, it's another 2 4, but it was a very much a side game. I mean, uh, for, for, in the 40 second, uh, Betis made it 3 0. As I said, Betis flying really, really well. Um, then, just before and after, after Gomez pulls it back, makes it a little bit more e exciting, and then uh, Fikir in the 49th says, okay. That game is done and Betis can cruise. Uh, Real Sotat get a rather unexciting win over Granada, who also are slipping a little bit down in trouble. And then Espanyol Barcel against Barcelona. Pedri, very uh, after Jordi Alba assist. How I hate that player, I cannot tell you. Uh, <laughs> I said it last, last week, and now since I argued so much with my little brother, I have to make sure that I mention this every single time. I do not like Jordi Alba, I think. He should retire, gone, or go to the second division over there. Enough. In any case, um, they take the early, the early lead, and of course, Barcelona is controlling the game. However, uh, Raul de Tomas is just a amazing player, and he scores two goals. Although uh, Darder is here given as the, equ the the one who scored the equalizer, uh, but there was no denying that Raul de Tomas in 64th had actually uh, put Espanyol into the lead. Which, given how uh, poor Barcelona were, were playing, that, and that's again, you think they just had a, had a great performance again against Atletico. You think they're turning a corner? No, against Espanyol. And Espanyol that has not been exactly flying. They just cannot turn the corner. And of course, there's the derby, there's a lot of uh, ill will uh, against each other. So, yeah, that all plays into it. But still, you're Barcelona. I mean, you're. Even with this probably weakest Barcelona squad in ages, you are still uh, three steps above in pure talent over Espanyol. Didn't happen. The Raul de Tomas, or R dot, D dot, T dot, makes it 2-1. And you really thought at this point that Espanyol had won that game if it wasn't for Luke de Jong. Uh, Ed Galassi, I actually really like that Luke de Jong is scoring the goals because he is the one consistent performer and everyone's ridiculing him. That guy has a penchant for important goals. So I, I think he might be limited in his technical abilities, but overall in his impact, I think he's a rather good Google player that should get a whole lot more love. Of course, as it's typically for Derby, Gerard Piquet and uh, Melamed get sent off for fighting. That was just happening before. Uh, the 2-2 two, two draw. So yeah, everything that you want to have from a good derby was in there. And then yesterday, the guys that I'm wearing, uh, Mallorca beat Athletic Club. Again, cup time was maybe uh, not that bad uh, for them. And so in the end, Real Mallorca also get an important win. So uh, briefly at the standings, I mean, that one, uh, you know, gives Mallorca a little bit of pre-breathing. Alaves, despite getting a win, they have Maybe a slight shot, but it's still four points. So it really looks like that the bottom three are the ones that are actually going down in many ways, uh, which, yeah, too bad in many cases because uh, all these teams have been having good results. Uh, up top, yeah, Barcelona stayed just ahead of Atletico Madrid. Both are still odds on making the Champions League, although the way Betis are playing, I actually think that both Sevilla teams will be next uh, season in the champ Champions League is between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. The only thing that could uh, be against those teams, they are all still in Europe. They probably are eyeing, yeah, we could make it both to the Europa League final, which will be played in Seville at uh, the Piscuan, I even think. So that could be interesting. Uh, title race, not really, although it's four or four points, not really happening. I think uh, the fight between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid is probably the one thing that will keep us entertained, especially since both sides are so non-perfect that it's actually fun to watch. Upcoming games, what do we have? Uh, we have a Basque 
derby happening between Athletic Club and Real Sociedad. That's a big one. Um, uh, Real Madrid is playing Alaves. Should Trubisma Atletico against Osasuna and Barcelona at Valencia is also a very interesting one. And then Betis against Mallorca. Um, as I said, I think at the moment Betis are the most fun side to watch in Spain. So yeah, that was it from me for this week. Uh, please drop a line below if you uh, if you want to add anything to what I've been saying. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.